All right, so a couple of days ago, I did a video about VS Code and connecting to a remote machine over SSH with the code base on the remote and then dependencies on the remote and being able to edit the code using Visual Studio Code locally. And yet when you go to run it from the terminal or otherwise, it runs on the remote machine then, not the local machine. And so you get the experience of developing locally when in fact, everything's actually remote. So I covered that and then after I did that video, I stumbled on this feature inside of Zed, which I haven't used yet. So I took a look at that the last couple of days. There's a new Zed remoting feature. It was just released in, I believe, an alpha state at this point. There are some bugs I've encountered, but in general, it works. So I wanted to make a quick video about this so that you're aware of it. If you're using Zed, it's something you can definitely take a look at. And it's definitely functional enough at this point in time that you can use it to be able to write some code remotely. So first, let's take a look at how we connect. So for example, if I have a Raspberry Pi and I want to connect it and do some remote development, then inside of Zed here, if I open up the command palette and look for remote, there's projects and open remote, hit that. And then the first thing I need to do, I need to establish a connection to a remote machine. So I'll click connect here. And then I need to provide information to connect, which in this case will just be Pi 6 is the name of the node. By the way, at this point in time, I've already got this machine set up so that I can easily connect to it over SSH. Just like I said with VS Code, it's a good idea to do that to get all your config into your SSH configuration so that you can just SSH in the name of the machine and be done with it. The fewer the arguments here, the easier it's going to be then when you're in Zed and you want to connect because you don't need to provide the arguments yet again here. All right, now I'll leave configure over SSH by default, which means it'll automatically set up Zed on the remote. Go ahead and click connect here. Give it a second, it establishes the connection. If it doesn't have Zed installed already, I did because I've obviously been using this, it would actually go through the step of installing Zed, might take a few seconds to do that. Once it's done then, just click done here. And then you can see there's the remote. Of course, I could add other remotes, or I could go about choosing a folder that I wanna open. So just click plus here. So first up, I can provide a path here. So I've got something with a clang d dash test. I was testing to see if the language server would work here. So I'll open up this directory. All right, once that opens up, you can see the files over on the left. And I could click into the test.py, for example. I have nothing inside of here. I have some stuff in the C file, though. And you can see I've got an include here. And if I want to jump into the included file here, just hit F12. You can see the language server is obviously working for C because it's pulled up slash user slash include and then standard input output dot H. So that's really neat. You've got some help when you're typing things out here with whatever libraries you've included. And that's a smaller project. Now let's try a bigger project here. Open up a different folder. So I'll just put in the path to this other project I have here. All right, once that opens up, then over on the left here, you can see all my files. This one's much bigger. So in this particular case, I've got, I've got a kernel module I'm working on down here. Lots of C code. So I've got all my includes here. And if I'm actually working on this code and I maybe wanted to type out some API call into the kernel, I have access to the completions here. I can find all of the methods that are available in my current set of includes. So I can use that to help find what I'd like to look at. Or of course, if I put my cursor on a symbol, I can just hit F12 to jump to it. And then I also have some Python in another file on this project, this hello world message. So this is some Python code to interact with the sense hat on my Raspberry Pi over there. So let's just do something here. Let's just change this, have the message say something else instead. How about we say Zed? So if I change that, set the color to green here. How about I set the color to red actually? All right, so set the color and change the message. And so now I'm gonna show you what that looks like here when I run this. So when I open up the terminal down below, of course I'm on that machine then, so I can just run the Python script then, point out the location of that hello world message script. And then I'm gonna start up and record this here for you. All right, here we go, let's run this. And there you go, got my Zed message with a bang on the end and it is red. Of course, I could change it if I want to. I could undo the changes I did here, put that back to green, save that, come down below, run that again. There you go, you can see it's green this time. So that's how easy it is to work with code on a remote machine with Zed. And of course, in the case of Python, if I wanna take a look at my imports, I can just click on those and hit F12, jump to those definitions, see what else is available. Or of course, I've got completions in here. Like for example, maybe I wanna print out from one of the other sensors, there's an accelerometer, I think. Of course, yeah, I can get some completions with Copilot because that extension is working. Or if I don't want Copilot completions, I could do a sense dot here and then I could arrow down through the list. 
look for accelerometer. I think that's the one right here. Complete that, save that, open up my terminal again. Let's run that again. Down below, you should see in the terminal. There you go. There's the acceleration, X, Y, and Z axis. So yeah, it makes it for a nice experience to write code on a remote machine as if I'm running it locally with all the language servers that I'm used to, with all the completions, with all of the co-pilot features, everything you're used to inside of Zed now works when you're connecting to a remote machine. And of course, this is just the alpha or early stages of this release of this feature. I'm sure it's going to get better over time. Some of the little bugs I've encountered will get hammered out. And I think this will become a really nice addition to Zed when it comes to using it, perhaps instead of something like VS Code which has for a while now had rather complete implementation of remotely editing code over SSH. Let me know down below, what do you think of this feature? Is this something that you occasionally use to SSH into a remote machine and do some development? Would this be something that you think would help you out? Let me know down below.